Hi everyone, I'm Ben Pearson and I'm going to be talking to you today about dicks on a motorway. So stick with us and let's get into the video about dicks on a motorway. <laughs> and I don't mean like male genitalia, I just mean like people that are dicks. Roll the titles. So why am I making this video? I got asked the other day why the motorway is how it is and tell me a little bit about your career on the motorway. So first of all, let me just get into this. The motorway is probably the most dangerous place to be. Um, driving on the motorway is horrendous and patrolling the motorway is even worse. You've got three lanes, sometimes four lanes, maximum speed is 70 miles an hour, and not one person normally pays attention to anything that goes on. So let me start it off. The maximum speed you should be going on the motorway is 70 miles an hour. Let's just make it that. Regardless, I'm not talking about goods vehicles, I'm not talking about car derived vans, caravans, or the maximum speed's 70 miles an hour. So just because you've got an Audi, let's, let's cut into this, because you've got an Audi, it doesn't mean the speed limit for you is 120 miles an hour. You happy? You are losing the American working man his job. And then also going up someone's ass in your car in the fast lane and edging out as though you're going to be next to the Amco barrier and then flashing your lights doesn't mean I'm going to be pulling over for you because first of all, you look like an absolute dick. Um, that's why it's about dicks on the motorway. It's normally always our drivers, especially... Q7s, um, A5s, A4 Estates, they're normally in a blue colour or a boring grey colour with standard wheels on. And you all seem to drive like a set of dicks on the motorway. And I don't know what it is, but you feel like you've got an entitlement to go past everyone and do what you want. Um, that's why I sit in the fast lane sometimes. When I see you come in, I'll just ignore you. I'll sit in the fast lane then and I'll go to 70 miles an hour just to prove a point so you can't get past I shouldn't be really doing it because it's childish, but I don't really care anymore. Uh, I think it's fun. I start laughing at you uh, and I can see frustration on your face as you get redder and redder and redder. Let's see if I can do that. Hang on. <sighs> I think I'm going to pass out. Shouldn't have done that really. But yeah, red like that. You, you'd always normally businessmen aren't you you're always that businessman that's going to a meeting somewhere high powered gotta get back bye bye sell sell uh always got a shirt and tie on always got a shirt and tie and i can tell who you are because you've always got your jacket on up on back seat also you've got the white van man now this is what really bags me off about the white van man is i was going on the motorway on the m62 the other day and the white van man came behind me so I'm in a Golf GTI, but the white van man comes up in his um, Renault double O, wherever it is, fully laden, two and a half ton, uh, pushing a 1.9 litre diesel engine, and he flies up my ass, uh, and he wants to get past. Bullies me out of way. So I think, right, I'll let you go past, and I'll let him go past. He comes past me, and he's like, <laughs> uh, with face on, you know, like, yeah, get out of my way, I'm a builder, I'm coming past our Approaching us field, and road goes up in a big slope. He's got to move over to lane one because his van's just not going to go up there. So I just drive past him, fast lane again, looking at you going, what the fuck are you doing? Absolute dick. We go over the top towards other field, and then lo and behold, I look in my rearview mirror, and then there's white van man again, right up my ass. I let him pass. I go into lane two, and I let him pass, and he comes past me again. <laughs> What are you doing? Because you get to the other side of the field and you start going up towards Rainbow Bridge again and he pulled into lane one. And I went past him again and I thought, what the fuck? You're not going any faster. You're not going, you're not getting to any point in your journey any faster than anybody else. So just stay in lane one or lane two. Um, stop bullying people that way because you intimidate loads and loads of females that are about, especially men as well. You, I just don't know what you want to achieve because, like you said, you, everyone just comes past you again and you technically leapfrogging for no reason at all. So please, anyone in a white van, don't stick in fast lane. Uh, you're not trying to prove out. You're not in a Ferrari. You're not in a Porsche. Just admit you're in a slow vehicle and then go in the slow lane or lane two. It's that simple. You don't have a slow, medium and fast lane. And I know people think you do, but you don't have a slow, medium, fast lane. 
So to sit in lane two at 64 miles an hour, Neville, you need to get a grip of yourself. So we all know Neville, don't we? Neville's got a Ford Fiesta, one litre automatic, and it's normally in a beige or brown colour. Neville will sit there in his driving gloves at 64 miles an hour in lane two. He won't look at his mirrors because he's not bothered, and he'll put his chin up when he drives because that's what Neville does. Uh, Neville will block all the vehicles because he doesn't want to drive in lane one because he thinks he's above the trucks, um, but it will cause everyone that's in lane two to get frustrated and either undertake in lane one or overtake in lane two. I don't get the theory of why Neville drives on the motorway. I know he needs to get from A to B, but why Neville doesn't use the B roads is beyond me because he'll save people time, money uh, and frustration. It's like trucks. Um, I believe trucks should be allowed on the motorway, but between certain hours. The reason being is the amount of trucks that will go up a steep hill, then overtake the truck in front, and they're both going at 56 miles an hour, and it takes truck two six miles to overtake truck one, which causes a massive tailback. Trucks should be regulated to lane one and stay in lane one regardless. And again, it's on the dual carriageway. A truck will try to overtake, gone at A1, try to overtake truck two, and it will go past it at 56 miles an hour. It'll take another four miles for it to overtake. It's absolutely pathetic. There should be no reason for this to take place. And if you regulated trucks on the motorway between a certain hours, um, none of this would be taking place. And you'd have loads of free space for people to go on a normal journey and not cause any frustration and not cause collisions. The fact that people pull over in the hard shoulder and answer the phone calls because that's a safe place to do it. It's not. You don't use the hard shoulder from anything apart from an emergency or if your car is breaking down or got a flat tyre. If you do get a flat tyre on the motorway or you do break down on the motorway, pull over to the side road as quickly as you can, as quickly as it's safe to do so. Get across the Armco barrier and then ring 999 or break down. Do not sit in your vehicle. You are a sitting target for people to misjudge the traffic and then ram in the back of you. Uh, manage motorways, whatever you want to call it. These boil my piss. When they first come out, I thought this were a good idea. Then it turns out in busy traffic, you use all four lanes, which one is the hard shoulder. That's fantastic until you have a breakdown in lane one, two, three, and four, and you've got nowhere to go. Where are you going to go when you're in lane four and you've broken down? You just sit in lane four, which causes a blockage in the fast lane, makes everyone in the fast lane go to lane two, lane three causes congestion it causes further accidents they should never have done it but my thoughts are we just need to make the lanes bigger like they do in america they need to be six lane carriages we're not living in a, a world anymore like in 1967 we are living in 2023 and we need to have four lane carriage motorways if not five lane carriage motorways just due to the amount of traffic that are driving on them uh, then we need somewhere safe for people to pull off uh, get out of the vehicles and remain safe the amount of times I patrolled the motorway and came across people sat in lane three or four, either broken down, still sat in the vehicle, uh, or trying to change a wheel in the fast lane, it's beyond me. You should never be sat in your vehicle if you break down. It is too dangerous. When you get out of the police car and a truck comes past you at 70 mile an hour, it shakes the ground and all it takes is one bang and then you're dead. Uh, we've lost police officers on the motorway. There have been fatal collisions on the motorway due to people being hit in the um, hard shoulder. Please switch yourselves on and drive safely. That's all we're asking you to do. My theory is if you're scared to drive on the motorway, just don't do it. Uh, there's so many people I know that have passed the tests and they'll say, I'm too scared to drive on motorway. Well, you can still get to the top part of England, to the bottom part of England without going on the motorway. Motorways haven't always been here. And in the 1920s, when there were no motorways, uh, you had to drive on the normal B roads. So just drive on the B roads. It'll take you a little bit more time. But if you're not comfortable and you're scared, don't drive on it because you can be a danger to yourself but other members of the public as well. It is not worth it. If you do think you are going to drive on the motorway and want to drive at 10 mile an hour below the speed limit, don't. And if you do, drive in lane one. Don't ever come out of lane one because the frustration you will cause on other drivers getting right up your ass, break the two second rule and cause a crash. You will always have knobbers on the motorway. Knobbers will always exist, especially knobbers in Audis. Uh, so if you are the white van man and you drive on the motorway and get up people's asses, you've got no skill and you are a knobber. If you are an Audi driver on the motorway and you get people's asses and expect to come through because you're driving out Audi, you are a knobber. 
please get off the moorway and stop being a knobber on the moorway. Buy a BMW or a Mercedes. Please learn how to drive on the motorway. It is not rocket science. Uh, I'm so frustrated with driving on motorways. It feels like I want to get a plane from Leeds Bradford Airport. I'd rather fly down than drive on a motorway. I'd rather get a train than drive on a motorway. It's just boring. They don't do anything apart from just like put signs up. Uh, you nod off. You end up going to Costco and buying a kin overpriced kin bun or a brew for like 12 quid that you always get wrong. And what the fuck's a flat white anyway? Uh, <laughs> So if you see me in a petrol station or a motorway service station, say hello to me. Ask me how Audi drivers are and white van men and I'll tell you to fuck off. <laughs> I won't really. Uh, hope you like what we do. Stick with us. We've got another one coming next week. Um, big love and I'll see you soon.